Hey, it's Emily and these are the best books that I've read so far this year. So I thought I'd do a little wrap up of all the best books I read in the first three months in January, February and March. Just go over the ones that I gave either 4.5 or 5 stars, um, just very briefly and yeah, do a little catch up. I think I've got about nine books to talk about. So it's been a fairly good reading year so far for me. It's been very good numbers wise. I've read like at least nine books every month. So yeah, these are just like the best lot of them I suppose. Got quite a mix in here for sure but um yeah let's just talk about those books. Also I've got my Rebecca top on, Mandalay, another favourite book of mine so. I feel it clearly with a sense of pain and dread. The world has changed to me. He has all new colours, the bright sun, fresh air. It all seems so beautiful. I now know that we should rejoice in it all. So the first book I'm going to talk about is a non-fiction, it's like a diary, memoir sort of thing, um, and that is You Don't Know What War Is by Yiva Skalitska. Um, and this is the diary of a young girl in Ukraine um, when the war kicked off, um, and it starts with her birthday just before, and then it goes through day by day. What she went through is her diary entries, and it also has loads of pictures throughout, um, which is so intriguing and each day sort of starts with the headlines i gave it five stars um i don't normally rate non-fiction it was so moving to read um and when you hear things about on the news but then to seeing it from like their actual perspective and from a young girl as well i think she's like 12 13 that was even more powerful i think because it's you know it's a child whose ch child has completely been upturned it also includes snippets of her like text chats with her friends as they all get like spread out across the you know well, I was gonna say country but across Europe um as they all kind of flee so I highly recommend this and it's nice and short and it really didn't take long to read at all but was still very impactful so yeah that's the first book I read this year actually it was literally the first book I read and gave it five stars so definitely recommend this. People tend to feel happy when spring arrives, especially after a cold winter. When spring begins, however, cannot be pinpointed to one particular moment. There is no one day that clearly marks when winter ends and spring begins. Spring hides inside winter. We notice it emerging with our eyes, our skin and other senses. We find it in new buds, a comfortable breeze and a warmth of the sun. It exists alongside winter. So the second book I'm going to talk about is Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. And I just love this series. It's just such like a, I was gonna say comfort read, but I mean, know that I'm gonna go into them loving them. And I'm waiting for the third one to come out and pay for it before reading it so that they all match. Cause they do, even the first two on my shelves look really nice next to each other. So waiting for a third. And there's been a fourth one announced, like. The fourth book is coming out in September in hardback, but there's more and I just love it. And I just love that they're all kind of different tales, but it's all connected by the cafe. So this is set in a cafe. So this is the second in like the series and it's there set in a cafe that you can go back in time, but there's certain rules that you have to follow when going back in time. So you can't go back and change the future. Like you can't change anything, but you can go back to the cafe to a certain time but the person you're meeting has to have been in the cafe, if that makes sense. If you know, you know. But um, I really enjoyed this, and this is actually the first book ever that I actually highlighted with a highlighter and not just like underlined in a pencil. So this is like a permanent mark in the book. Um, so I really enjoyed it, and there's just so many quotes in here that I like, I, like I said, highlighted. Sorry, I just went and watched my friend cross the, uh, the London Marathon finish line watched it on telly anyway one thing i really did enjoy about this one is that it felt like the whole like the staff at the cafe like the core characters had their own like a proper like arc story arc throughout the little like the four parts so there's like four little stories of people coming back to the cafe and you get their story but throughout it you do get glimpses of people at the cafe like their story um and then each chapter starts with like a really nice little paragraph that's tales from the cafe it's often the case with people who don't read fiction hollow inside monochrome so they can switch gears no problem they swallow something and forget about it as soon as it goes down their throat constitutionally incapable of empathy these are people who most need to read but in most cases it's already too late so I've actually bunched the next two together because they're by the same author, they're in the same series, it's book one and two in the series, and that is Bullet Train and Three Assassins by Kotaro Isaka. Three Assassins is actually book one, um, and Bullet Train is book two, though I read this first. They're like companion novels, they're not like an actual series, but they are 
you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you can read them separately. Um, but there is, like, one character that crosses over. He's a quite prominent character in Three Assassins, but he does feature in Bullet Train. Although, Bullet Train, he's cut out of the movie. He doesn't feature in the movie, and he's one of my favourite characters, and I absolutely love it. He's, like, the main character in Three Assassins. Or one of them, anyway. One of the Three Assassins, funny enough. Um, but yeah, so I read this, because I wanted, if you ignore where my rabbit chewed it, um, I read this before watching the movie, because I wanted to read it before watching the movie, and it's fairly long. I mean, but look at the flop though. Um, anyway, I loved it. I gave this five stars, and it was just so high paced, non-stop, it was so hard to put down because so much was happening, and I just flew through it. I was just like, every time I sat down, I think I read it in like three chunks, and it's, it is like, what? It just under 500 pages and I just sat down and was just in love like it just was it was just such a good time reading it <laughs> that's what I have to say like, I just enjoyed my time reading it so much and it is fairly similar to the movie up to a certain point in the movie and then the movie just takes off like in a random direction for the most part it is very similar to the movie oh it's just like I loved the characters I loved how it was like bounced across different perspectives on the train um, and the twists and just it was just full of action and I loved it it was just great and then Three Assassins I read pretty promptly after because I ordered it the reason I have this in hardback is because it came out in paperback after I got this if that makes sense so this got translated second which is why more people have read Bullet Train than Three Assassins it's so good and it's short it's shorter but I fled fled through it Flew through it, I think is what I meant to say. And so this kind of follows three assassins and then like one ordinary man, but he's out for revenge, whereas their mission is, like it says on the front, their mission is murder. He is revenge. His is revenge. It's so hard to explain. So basically this like big like mob boss guy, his son is murdered and by an assassin. And then so he's then trying to get whoever killed, like this assassin killed. It's it's oh, I don't know how to explain it it's just so good and I'm realizing that maybe like assassins are like my niche this is like my new niche that I really like is uh assassins I I just love these I can't wait for the next one to come out if it's coming out because there's a third one I don't know if it's been translated yet I should probably check that it wasn't last time I checked but I would love to read more from this author 100% I just it was such a fun time such a fun time. I forgot to say, I gave Three Assassins 4.5, although thinking back, I probably should just bump it up to 5 because I loved it just as much as Bullet Train. The island. Go to Gokimon Island. My sisters will be murdered. My cousin. My cousin. The next two um, are also, funnily enough, a Japanese translation, um, as has been a, a trend, as you can see. Um, there, I read two murder mysteries from the same author, from the same series, and that is The Inugami Curse and Death on Gokumon Island. So I gave this four, which is the only four, I think, in this list, maybe. This I gave 4.5. I love this one, but they're, like, very similar. I enjoyed them both. And so, yeah, these are, like, Japanese murder mysteries. I first found out about the author as it was described to me as, like, the Japanese Agatha Christie. And if you didn't know, Agatha Christie is one of my favourite authors. I love her murder mysteries. I thought I'd pick up the first one, which is the Honjin Murders. I've read these two this year so far. It, oh, it was just so much fun. It's set on like an I well, yeah, island and it's kind of focused all on this one family. It kind of has these families that are like feuding, These ha they hate each other and then these killings start happening. But yeah, so this they all follow the detective Kazuki Kindaichi and he's like a young detective um and yeah i'm just gradually reading them as they are published i've got one more on my tbr which is the village of eight graves and then i'm caught up with all the ones that have been translated but yeah i'm just having a good time reading them um yeah i found that they're both very hard to put down these two in particular follow kind of families so this is the unigami curse it follows the unigami clan killings start happening within the family this is all focused around family and I realised that family is like a trope, I guess, in mysteries that I really love when it's all like a kind of closed circle of people. I really recommend them. If you like murder mysteries, if you like Agatha Christie, check them out because they are, they're just really fun mysteries. And I can't wait for more of them to get translated and I will definitely be reading more. What I also love about these is that they always have the character lists at the front, which is very helpful with like family dynamic knowing who's the sons of who and all that so it's very helpful and also this one has a really nice map of the island so it really helps visualize um where things happen throughout the book so that's 
fantastic. Dying isn't the important thing. It's nothing more than the punctuation mark at the end of your life. It's everything that came before that matters. Punctuation marks, most people skip right over them. They don't even have a sound. So the next book I'm going to talk about is a horror and that is The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I know this isn't for everyone but it's definitely my cup of tea and I've been on such a horror kick recently um, and I am such a fan of Grady Hendrix. He is one of my favourite horror authors ever. This side though, actually I did give it four stars so it is another four star instead of 4.5 or 5 but I just had to mention it because it was just a fun time. I just love this sort of horror you know? So this follows a group of girl, like well women, they're now older um, and they are all final girls of their own stories and they go to a support group called the final girl support group and then one day one of them is killed and they're like the, the, our story isn't over and it goes on this wild ride where they're all kind of being targeted. Someone has found out about this support group where there's just final girls so yeah it's it was so much fun and what I loved throughout is that at the, like the end of each chapter, I'm going to try and find one, there's like articles or interview transcripts from the girl's original cases, so that's like a newspaper clipping from one of the girl's original final girl story. So you do get to learn all about their backstory and how they became a final girl as well as the main drama that's happening at the moment, if that makes sense. So yeah, I did binge it out very quickly over a couple of days and I find that Grady Hendrix, I can always go to him, I was gonna say comfort read, it's not really, yeah, I guess horrors can be comfort reads, but like I know I'm gonna have a good time when I read a Grady Hendrix. I've read, I haven't read How to Sell a Haunted House, but I have got that now, um, but I recently read Paperbacks from Hell, which is a non-fiction from him about horror. That was very interesting as, yeah, I'm just becoming more and more of a horror person at the minute and this was just a fun one. If you've got the opportunity to love someone as much as they love you, then grab it with both hands and hold on to it for dear life. Next up, we have The One by John Mars. Chloe recommended this to me from Chloe Reads Books. Um, and I found it in a charity shop. Initially, I wasn't that like fussed by it, to be honest. Like, I just found it in a charity shop for a pound and it's in good condition. Like, it was unbroken spine and everything. So I thought, yeah, I'll pick it up finally got round to it and i can see why chloe's raving about it um i really really enjoyed it so this um is about a sort of like dna test that you can take to find your true like match like your your soulmate and it follows five different characters i lied it's got a two pound sticker on the back it wasn't a pound it follows their kind of stories as they meet their match and get to know them and how they're not all necessarily from like the same country and and yeah, it's just not all as it seems. And as it says on the back, now five more people meet their match, but even soulmates have secrets and some are more shocking and deadly than others. So yeah, it was definitely like a fun ride. All the chapters are super short, so I find that I fly through books quicker when they're that way. What also made me get through it quickly was the fact that it's got five perspectives and it goes through them like throughout. Um, but if there's like a twist at the end of like a character's perspective, you've then got to read like four different perspectives before you can find out more about that twist if you know what I mean so that made me read through it quicker so I was like I need to I need to get through it just to find out what that meant you know however that the tv show I watched one episode and I was like what is this like it Chloe said it's good I haven't watched any more than this so I expect it is good but it was very different from the, like it doesn't follow any of the same characters really um I think one character was the same but had a different name it was just like the kind of role that she played i will probably read more john mars after this because it was a good fun read i gave it 4.5 you do not know how fast you have been running how hard you have been working how truly exhausted you are until someone stands behind you and says it's okay you can fall down now i'll catch you and then now we're on to the final book on this list i feel like the sun's just gone in so i apologize but the final book is Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is the second Taylor Jenkins Reid I've ever read. I've read Dose Jones and the Six, which I gave five stars. I reread that this year and gave it five stars again, but I didn't include it because it was a reread. This I gave 4.5. I still really enjoyed it, but it was just missing something, like the five star feeling. And I spoke to Rachel. Um, she read it around the same sort of time. She felt the same, which is nice to know that I'm not the only one who was like missing that five star feeling. I feel like I could have got that five star feeling if the hype wasn't so big. Like this is such, such a hype book that I went into it with high expectations. And then I was like, it's just missing that five star feeling for me. So maybe that has something to do with it. The fact that it was so hyped. One good thing though, is that yes, I've heard so much about it. Everyone loves it. 
I didn't really know much about the plot apart from it was like a movie star and it's got her going through her life and her seven husbands um so I didn't actually know much about the plot until I actually picked it up this has been on my shelves for a long time and I picked it up finally when I went to Turkey with Chloe. I started reading it there and finished it off when we got back. Yeah, I still still really enjoyed it. I, I gave it 4.5. It's making my best books of the year so far. I'm not sure if it will make the best books of the year. It might do. I think I put it down as my best book of March on my like tree thing. Um, So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I still really enjoyed it. It was just missing something for me. But I think going into it, not knowing too much about the plot, was quite nice and so i won't go into too much i mean i'm sure everyone knows about it anyway if you haven't already read it especially because taylor jenkins read seems to be on a bit of a kick at the moment like everyone seems to be reading her like backlist books as well as her newer ones like might be rising and carrie soto's back but yeah this is annoying though as much as i love days days in the six um this, it's not a sticker but yeah so that's my second taylor jenkins read I enjoyed it i'll probably still read malibu rising and then i'll begin to see like the crossovers i've only read two and there wasn't much crossover between this and daisy jones and the six i can but i can't wait to start reading more and be able to spot different characters if you know what i mean so that'd be nice but um yeah and this is longer than i thought it would be like the audio book was a lot longer than i expected for a book of this size and the font is quite small but it was a good time and I do recommend this. I quite like books that are set in like the 50s, 60s. One of my favourite books ever, I think it was my favourite book of last year, was Beautiful Ruins by Jess Walter, which is also set in like the 60s with like movie stars. So I highly recommend that. If you've read Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, read Beautiful Ruins. I'm not gonna lie, I can't remember what I was saying because my phone just ran out of storage. But um, yeah, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That's the last one on my list of my top books I've read in January, February, March, or like quarterly best books. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it from me for this one. All right, so here we have it. The stack of nine books, the best nine books that I've read this year. Um, definitely a bit of a mix. We've got horror, thriller, literary fiction, historical fiction, mystery, and then non-fiction memoir at the top. So... Yeah, those are the best books I've read so far this year. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you've gotten this far, I do appreciate it. And yeah, I hope to see you soon with a brand new video. Bye.